Hey guys, this is Camfrey15 and I'm back at it with another video for you guys. And we are back. Finally, Stargirl is back on the CW, um, or is back on your TV. Because, uh, yeah, it's time to talk a uh, lovely Stargirl because it's not like I simp for Breck Bessinger because she's cute and she's hot and she's adorable. But um, anyways, 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 um, we are back with the highly you know, anticipated season two of Stargirl I'm coming off. It's pretty good season one. Um, and definitely what I would call a sleeper. So uh, we pick off really where we last left off. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's get to the review. So we start the episode off, you know, in Melody Hills, Indiana, decades ago. And we see this girl named Rebecca talk to this apparent boy named Bruce. And let me just tell you, this whole first scene, I literally thought I was watching The Conjuring or something like that. Like, they really made me think we were watching a horror movie. And I'm like, why, I'm like, why are we watching a horror movie? Because I don't care that, you know, we need... It, it, it's just crazy because, you know, you have this one part where... Eventually, when Bruce is like, "Why don't you go to that party?" Rebecca's walking to the road. She almost gets hit by a dang truck, and I'm like, and I and I literally jumped. I was like, "Are we? Are we? Are we going to uh, freaking conjuring stuff here?" Because I wasn't trying. I wasn't thinking we're getting horror stuff in this uh, things and stuff in the show. I'm I'm not here to come watch horror movies. But um, what happens is she ends up going to the party. Then Bruce, you know, was like, "Hey, why don't you get that?" present there's a nice little doll you like so first things first why are you stealing a present from somebody's birthday party um so she takes the one of the presents and essentially um we see how she opens it up it's like a freaking scary looking chucky doll type of thing she drops it and then bruce looks back she's like oh you did a bad thing and you stole it and he, he pulls out this crystal um and when the mother is looking for the daughter, she comes across in the lawn. We're only, you know, I guess, led to believe that Rebecca was killed in a brutal way. And uh, the mailbox says uh, McKnighter, which um, when I watch um, Paige's reviews, um, he speaks of the fact that McKnighter was a reference to Dr. Midnight. Um, so that's the, that was the first Dr. Midnight. So... Yeah, and we also we find out that um, also I found out also through the page that the um, obviously the crystal involves Eclipso, which I believe they said is going to be the main antagonist of this season. So yeah, so okay, that's nice and all. So we get to the present timeline, and the new J JSA is trying to look for bad guys and stuff like that, but they really haven't been doing anything the past few months, really, after the events of season one after they, take, after they took out the new ISA. You have, like, Rick and Yolanda, even Beth, like, like, you know, Court, there's nothing going on. What's the point? Like, there's been no villains, there's been nothing. What are we doing out here in our costumes? We're just doing nothing. And Courtney's it's just like, but who knows, guys? You know, anything can happen anytime. The ISA could come back and we need to be there. And they're like, yeah, really? It's been a few months since then. And guess what? Nothing. We're just going to go. So they all leave and everything and stuff like that. And we see how she, when she gets back to her house, Pat sees her down in the basement looking at JSA stuff. And Pat's like, Courtney, it's four in the morning. What are you doing? And Courtney's just like, well, we need to look for the JSA. And she's asking like about all these different villains and everything that past like this person was taken care of and everything um, and stuff like that. Um, and essentially Pat's like, listen, why are you worrying so much about being a superhero? Like you need to focus about being a regular girl, a regular human, like focusing on your life because your superhero life isn't the main thing to go to. But Courtney is kind of resistant against that, but she's like, but you know, I'm a hero. Like she even says like a line like, man, I'm a superhero. Who cares about the rest of life when I could go out there and save the world? And I'm like watching this and I'm like, ah, she still doesn't get it. She still doesn't get it. I said it time and time again with my Stargirl reviews for season one, 
the one thing I hated about Courtney's character is that she literally is hard headed, very hard headed to a huge fault. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm just watching this. And I'm like, you I'm like, girl, you cannot be this hard headed. Even the most common teenager would understand, you know, they put their real life ahead of their superhero life. Hell, I, you know, Spider-Man essentially is kind of a thing because at first Peter Parker's in high school when he starts when he first becomes Spider-Man and he has to manage his high school life with his superhero life. And I'm like, come on, man. I'm like, come on, Courtney. So it's kind of the same thing here in this entire episode where she's kind of up and giddy to try to be doing superhero stuff and everything. Um, and obviously you have to have, you have her parents and even her friends telling like, maybe we should take a break from doing the whole super t- superhero routine and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, now the next day, well, after they leave the green lamp, we see the green lantern lamp start to light up. Now the next day, Pat says um, to obviously um, Mike that um, he's planned a summer vacation trip to Yellowstone Park um, and he wants it to be a family vacation. And they're all ripping and ready to go in there like and they have a whole little vote and everything. And it was a little funny scene because Mike and Courtney, Courtney don't want to go, but they're like, well, too bad. The dog has the last say, the final say, and that's what they're going. So that's going to be the summer vacation. Now we see Beth, who's trying to still fix the Dr. Midnight goggles because obviously Chuck, um, the old Dr. Midnight AI, AI is, isn't is in the goggles anymore after the events of season one. Um, but she comes down, her parents come down, and she's kind of, you know, handing her parents, you know, obviously their lunch and stuff like that. And she's like, well, go back home. Eventually she comes across these divorce papers that her parents are filing for divorce. And she's kind of sad and kind of her thing this episode. And we see later in the episode, he's trying to, I guess, be the type of kid that's trying to get their parents after seeing that it seems like a parent is being going to get divorced, that they're going to try to, she's going to try to get them back together. But um, we see how the parents kind of act pretty awkwardly among, around her and everything. And she's kind of sad that it seems like, you know, her parents are going to be divorced because she always thought she had the perfect family um, and stuff like that. So um, it's going to be an interesting storyline to see when the parents will eventually tell Beth, like, hey, listen, we're planning on getting a divorce. Just some things in our, our lives are not working out. So that seems like that's going to be a storyline for Beth for this season, which I honestly like that they're giving her something because she was honestly kind of there in season one and to be perfectly honest and stuff like that. So, yeah. Now, Rick, we see him for his arc in this episode, you know, find like the Smash Forest, this like push over branches and then some beer bottles and stuff like that. We see later in the episode, he leaves like fried chicken now we are led i think we're leading to believe that that's solomon grundy um out there who's doing that stuff so that is a whole thing too we also see yolanda very obviously affected from the events of season one after she had to kill brainwave to essentially save her life and make sure she didn't she and the others didn't die i mean we see her go to the church and it's just so much she can't handle because she even tells courtney later on like i still hear the noises of brainwave and what I did, and she even asked Courtney, like, was it justified of what I did? And Courtney's like, well, yeah, because you have to protect yourself, you know? You have to do what you need, need to do to keep yourself safe and everything. Now, they end up actually seeing Cameron back in town. If you remember, Cameron was the guy that Courtney um, was, I guess, having has a crush on. I wish it was me, but uh, it's Cameron in the show, but she has... Uh, a crush on and two we also know that that's obviously icicle's son and everything um so yeah now we cover the school and everything um we see one teacher thinks rick cheated on a test when he got uh like 100 percent of his questions right and he's like you know what just fail me um listen um that's pretty and i will say this that's pretty an asinine statement listen I don't think teachers really care. I think obviously you care 
you cheated, but if you go ahead and percent, why are you why would a teacher's first intuition say, Oh, you cheated? What? So okay. Um now um we see how they're going into obviously the lunchroom. They're talking her and Yolanda are kind of talking about JSA stuff and just kind of forcing this JSA stuff on Yolanda. And Yolanda's kind of like, Court, maybe we should just kind of take a break from this superhero stuff. Um and everything. And yeah, so they end up running into Beth. They try to ask Beth like what's her problem, but Beth kind of is like trying doing the total typical hiding what's going on in her personal life. And then we see Artemis Croc um look like she's gonna attack Courtney, or Courtney feels like Artemis is going to attack her. She literally flips her over um and and kind of attacks her. Of course, eventually Courtney gets taken away. Um, and then she gets an apparent teacher conference um about the whole fact of the, uh, the fact that, well, not only about the Artemis stuff, um, she failed her summer school, um, or she or she failed her some classes, which are her history and her English class, and she has to take summer school, which cancels the plans, um, obviously, her family has to go to Yellowstone for the summer vacation, and her mom's upset and even Pat's upset because they're both like, well, what are you going to do? You know, you need to learn how to balance your hero life with your um, personal life. And even our mom makes the mention, like you told me you would be on your schoolwork. You, you, you'd you be focusing on school while doing your superhero stuff and everything. So her mom, so so obviously Court, Courtney's mom is very upset about that. Um, we see this guy, I forgot who this guy was. Um, he was somebody who we know, I forgot who it was, but he goes in the restaurant and he finds Pat, a parent, Pat's ex-wife, Maggie, and yeah, so we don't know if also Maggie had uh, Mike, if that's Mike's biological mother. So we're just going to lay that storyline back. So it seems like this character is looking for Pat. Uh, now we see Courtney walking from home. She talks to Cameron and they're kind of just, it's kind of a just we're just like, hey, you know, I'm sorry about your dad and everything and everything. Now we see her grandparents, we see Cameron's grandparents show up in the like, and I think it's the grandmother's, the grandmother is, I, th I think the grandmother is like, you should tell him about who she truly is. But obviously the grandpa's like, don't worry about it. He's happy. That's the only thing we can worry about right now. Um, which eventually I just have a feeling that the grandparents are going to be like, oh yeah, Courtney, she's star girl. And guess what? Star girl killed your son, your father. So you need to exact your revenge. Um, we now we saw earlier in the episode, um that Pat talked to this his I guess his, this dude named Zeke um when he thought they were gonna go on their vacation but he comes back and he's like oh we're not gonna go on the vacation after work but he specifically told him don't go into the obviously where he's holding the stripe robot but when he comes back he sees that Zeke's in there and it looks like Zeke's fixing up the robot and Zeke's like uh right, you don't need to tell me what you're using this robot for or anything but hey man this is gonna be a great partnership and it seems like Zeke's gonna be here to stay um so yeah um very freaking interesting um now also too going back to beth we see the dr midnight gog goggles turn on and it seems like dr midnight is there now beth's calling out to him but obviously you know dr midnight's like i don't know who you are and he automatically shuts off so that's another interesting story point in everything now courtney is still looking at some jsa stuff she but she overhears some things going downstairs. She gets into a fight with somebody who's stealing the Green Lantern's lamp. And after they have a nice, pretty nice fight in the house, it was pretty cool. Um, now, the girl says she's Green Lantern's daughter um, because the rain is obviously reacting to her and stuff like that. Um, and obviously her family um, sees and they're like, what the hell is going on here? And everything. Also, too, Courtney did a bad job because she messed up the house. Um, so, yeah. Now, the episode ends off with us seeing um, Cindy go to the ISA headquarters. And she looks to be choosing a recruiting or find new recruits for the new, I guess, her new ISA. Obviously, we see one of them is Artemis. A uh, few, I forgot. I forgot the other two. I, got, I forgot um, one of them. It was like the one um, parent. It was the one kid with the musical parents. It's been a while since I've seen this. Um, obviously, 
she rips up a picture of obviously her ex, Brainwave's son. Um, I, forgot, I forgot the third person she put, she put down. Um, and then the last person she puts down as a recruit for the new ISA is Mike, which we all know is Courtney's sister and Pat's son. And that is a huge revelation, a huge shock of like, what the hell does she want with Mike? Um, but for the premiere episode uh, for season two of Stargirl, I thought it was really freaking good. I enjoyed watching it. Um, and everything I loved about season one was here in season um, two, even the fact that I hate freaking Courtney being so, oh, I want to be a superhero, I want to be a superhero, instead of realizing you need to manage being a kid and having wanted to have a real regular life and being a superhero. Because then we go through this whole thing about being a superhero is hard because of just people dying and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's just weird, man. It's just weird. I really do hope they give a part where somebody close to... I, I really can't wait for the part when Cameron finally turns on her, potentially. And she's like... And then she actually is like, yeah, being a superhero freaking sucks. Um, so, yeah. But other than that, that's it. So, if you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's episode of Stargirl. And, uh, yeah, other than that, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully, you guys have a great rest of your day. Until then, guys, see you guys in the next video. Peace.